What up, D-League? Welcome to week 14. There's one week left until the fantasy playoffs, bitches. This is what it's all about. Two people have solidified their spot. One we pretty much expected. The other, not so much. Colin sold his soul and his future for a seat at the big boy table. If he wins, no one will ever notice the devil's dried man juice all over his face. But in order to do that, at some point he's going to have to probably beat Jamie. Let's take a look now at how my picks did for last week. Oh man, it feels good to be 3-2 and two again. It's amazing that not one week this entire season I was able to pick every game correctly. It truly is harder than I thought it would be. As you can see last week, I brought my wins up to 30. My losses are sitting at 25, going into my final week of regular season. Oddly enough, I didn't pick my game correctly, nor did I pick Dan and Colin's game correctly. There's been a lot of outcomes this season that have surprised me. Colin's team finding his way into the playoffs. Dan's team coming back from the dead. My team having a Super Bowl hangover for the ages. Sean's team performing a lot better than I thought it would or ever gave it credit for. And James and Nate solidifying the spots as the two worst teams in the league. Let's take a look now at our Rapist of the Week. Well, obviously we have a rapist. I'll take the rapists for 200. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. Rape is coming. Don't get raped. All right, our rapist of the week this week is Jamie. Once again, Jamie's back to get his rape on. Last week, Jamie wrecked Nate by dropping 163 points on him. That's almost an 80-point ass whooping. In a game that, in the end, really didn't matter, Jamie's team came out and made a statement for the two teams that are vying for the last two playoff spots. It'll be a true David vs. Goliath matchup in the playoffs, with probably the two worst real-life representations of those two people. Let's take a look now at who our biggest loser is. Bitch, I'm about to ball this. of 48 and I'm what some people call mentally retarded. He was a retard. I'm a driver. I'm a winner. Things are going to change. I can feel it. Only reason I'm crying is because of the adrenaline. <laughs> All right, our loser of the week this week is Nate. From rapist last week to loser this week. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Nate didn't put up much of a fight against Jamie. He mustered about 83 points in Jamie's scoring explosion. For being the last place team, Nate hasn't won this award as many times as I would have thought. Let's take a look now at our matchups. Alright, first up, we got Mind Grapes taking on Rainbow Warriors. I'm coming into this at 5 and 8, Dave's coming into this at 6 and 7. Well, this isn't the worst matchup of the week, but it certainly is the Who Gives a Shit Bowl. Dave still has a slight shot to make the playoffs, but basically there's not much to play for here in this matchup. For the most part, we're just jockeying for pole position in the consolation bracket. The quarterback, Rivers, should be the superior option. He's had a couple rough weeks, but I feel pretty comfortable that he's going to be able to outpace Josh Freeman. Wide receiver Dave's sporting a lot of red ink. Wayne already went for a modest 10 points this week. As long as White and Nix both play up to potential, he should be able to take me out in the wide receiver category. Miles Austin's actually been kind of a letdown this year with everything going on in Dallas. Colston's very hit or miss. And with Mason, it all depends on how they decide to defend Bolton. At running back, I might have a slight edge, but not enough to give me any confidence here. Bradshaw has lost a lot of touches to Jacobs, and Turner hasn't had the season a lot of people thought he would. McCoy has actually played a lot better than I expected him to, and Noshawn Moreno's had a nice rally in the second half of this season for me. From there on down, it's pretty much Dave. My tight end play is pretty shitty, and Dave has one of the best special team squads in the league. In the end, I think Dave wins this match, but not by the margin he would need to to pull off the playoff miracle if Travis and Sean both lost. All right, next up we have Team Disenchantment taking on Select Company. James is coming into this at 4 and 9. Jamie's coming into this at 10 and 3. This matchup isn't the worst one as well, but it is pretty boring. Jamie's locked up his playoff spot, so this match really means nothing to him. And James has really no shot at beating him. Basically, in every category across the board, Jamie has him beat. The only real shot James has is if Jamie's team completely tanks and James's team just goes crazy for some reason. We've seen it happen. We've seen Jamie get upset a couple times this season, but for the most part, I don't think James' team has what it takes to get that done. Realistically, in the end, Jamie will take his 11th win, and James will lock up his bottom spot for the playoffs. All right, next up we have Golden Toes taking on KC Reunited. Collins coming into this at 9-4. Sean's coming into this at 7-6. and six. 
Now we get to a real game. Sean either needs this win here or to do whatever Trav does, but by more points. It would definitely help to have a big day versus Colin this week. He's got 60 points on Trav right now, and he needs to keep that pace if he wants to get into the playoffs. As far as the matchup goes at quarterback, we have Brady taking on Vic. Both of them are playing pretty good ball right now. Unfortunately, Brady is going to be in cold and windy Chicago today. Vic is going to be in the cushy confines of Jerry World down in Dallas. It's not hard to predict that Vic is going to have the better day between the two of them. As far as the wide receiver matchup goes, Deshaun Jackson is really the only one out of these two groups that I like a lot. He is also going to be down in Dallas, obviously. It's looking like Harvin's not going to play from his case of vaginitis. And T.O. is actually in Pittsburgh today, so odds are he's not going to have a big day. Now, Stevie Johnson, though, could have a big day for Sean going against Cleveland. And you never know, Braylon might end up surprising in Miami. As far as wide receivers go, I'll probably give Colin the slight edge here. At running back, though, that's where Sean really starts to excel. Both of his running backs are looking to have pretty good matchups for him. Run DMC's had a decent year, and Felix has done okay. At tight end, Sean's team's already laid an egg this week, so I predict Colin's going to have a pretty easy time getting 3.6 points out of his tight end. Sean probably has a slight edge at special teams. I think all in all, this is actually going to be a really good game and actually come down to be pretty close. Because of the way that I think the playoff race is going to shake out, I'm actually going to say Colin's probably going to take the win here. All right, next up we have Seppuku taking on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Adam's coming into this at 6 and 7. Nate's coming into this at 3 and 10. Welcome to our Toilet Bowl matchup of the week. Adam has a small hope and prayer left to make the playoffs. There won't be a less deserving team to make the playoffs than Adam if he pulls it off. This week he gets the easiest matchup in the entire league. He just has to take advantage of his opportunity and score as many points as humanly possible. Every single point matters at this point for him. Adam needs Travis and Sean to both lose their game. And then out of all the people that end up being 7-7, seven and seven, he has to score the most points out of them. The advantage that he does have is all the teams that have the potential to be 7-7, seven and seven, he is the points leader between all of them. As for the matchup at QB is the only place that Adam's really outmatched here. Obviously Rodgers is a beast, but Matt Ryan has the potential to drop a good amount of points, and really that's all that matters for Adam right now. A wide receiver obviously has the edge. Lloyd is the only real threat on Nate's side. Bo and Bolden both have the potential to drop a lot of points this week. At running back, he clearly has the edge with MJD and Jackson both going. And he pretty much continues this trend from Witten on down. So for this matchup, not only do I predict that Adam's going to win, I also think he's going to score enough points to keep him as the points leader in that 7-7 seven seven pack. Alright, next up we have Here Comes Treble taking on Mavericks. Travis is coming into this at 7-6, and six. Dan's coming into this at 8-5. and five. Welcome to our marquee matchup of the week. This is a big one. Out of everybody in the playoff race, Dan is in the driver's seat right now to get that third playoff spot. If he loses, he'll need to score enough points to keep ahead of either Travis or Sean if one of them end up winning their game. Unfortunately, I don't think it'll come to that. Let's take a look at this matchup. The quarterback, Travis, does have Dan. Breeze has the potential to be a monster. Travis just better hope it's not to Lance Moore, though. Flacco gets a shitty pass defense this week, so he may be able to drop points and keep pace with Breeze. At wide receiver, Dan does have a slight edge. It's looking like Calvin Johnson's going to play. Even though he's got the toughest defense of the group, he's also the best wide receiver of the group. Fitzgerald's probably got the most talent, but he's also probably going to do the least this week. And for Dan, Lance Moore's the wild card play here. For Trav, Mike Wallace is probably the second best wide receiver in this group. Knox and Thomas are both pretty hit or miss. The running back is where Dan really starts to pull away. Travis is starting James Starks. That's really all that needs to be said about that. At tight end, Travis does have the advantage, obviously, with Gates going. Dan's starting Ben Watson, so clearly he's taking this playoff race seriously. Special teams are fairly even with Trav maybe having a slight edge. Mayo and Timmons are known to go off in the IDP category. In the end, I think that Dan wins and that Travis doesn't put up more points than Adam. Uh, wrap that shit up, dude. So in conclusion, I think that the playoff pitcher is going to end up being... Jamie, Colin, Dan, and Adam. That's going to wrap. When it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. It up for us this week. Next week is the playoffs. If anybody is wanting to contribute to the playoff special, please get with me this week because this is our week to get it done. Good luck, boys and girls, to all of your fantasy games this weekend, and we'll see you next week.